Hi everyone and welcome back. I have a fun short video today of an ATV trip some friends and I did in northern Nova Scotia, Canada. We started out around Brookfield, we rode north to Salmon River and looped our way back. We hit a variety of trails including fire roads, gravel pits, wood roads and lots of water. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it to get notified each time I upload a video. It was a really nice sunny day um, and great weather for late October. It was uh, a little chilly. I can't remember the exact temperature. I think maybe it was like five degrees. Um, that's five degrees Celsius. So I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit rain offhand. But you know, it was nice, it was brisk. Um, definitely a heated seat day. My wife bought me last Christmas one of these heated seats from Costco that you can just plug into your 12 volt outlet. And uh, man, I'll tell you, it really works really, really well. It gets hot fast. And um, it was, uh, I found it was just, just right. Bruce is up ahead in the commander uh, in front and he's right now trying to decide how deep the water hole is and if he's going to try to charge through it because uh, he's having a problem with his actuator turning on uh, or engaging his four-wheel drive and uh, eventually it finally did engage but not after uh, not until he spun his rear tires for a bit. Turns out, as long as you stayed to the far left of that water hole, it wasn't so bad you could drive through in two-wheel drive, no problem. The, uh, the right side, on the other hand, was just a little bit deeper. He's going to come the muddy way. Oh, okay, never mind. Here we go. Oh, I can hear him crunching the branches. Oh! Nothing the Ranger XP couldn't handle. Hey, he made it! <laughs> I was worried there for a second. Put it in low gear. I think it doesn't look that deep.
That's not good. Why does he run burning oil? When Bruce and I get up to the top of that hill, we noticed uh, when Brent was down doing a, a oh, bit of a donut, a bunch of smoke was coming out of the back of his machine, and then again just now, and uh, we couldn't tell at first if it was like smoke coming out of his machine uh, from the exhaust or if it was his belt, but it turns out uh, we narrowed it down to his belt. We spent a few minutes there uh, looking over Brent's machine, trying to figure out what was wrong. And then when we figured out finally that it was his belt, uh, he just took it easy on the throttle in a few places. And uh, he didn't see any smoke, or we didn't see any smoke anyways, uh, for that matter, coming out the rest of the day. But that wasn't the only time Brent was going to run into any trouble that day. And you'll see some of that later. And right now, I'm driving Thomas's machine. He just bought himself a new Razor 900 a few months ago, and uh, he and I swapped for a few minutes so I could uh, take it for a run on these tight trails to kind of get a, a feel for it. And I'll tell you, it's a 50-inch wide machine, and it was, uh, man, is it nimble. And, you know, it's peppy. It's, uh, it's light. I could feel it when I was driving it. It's con probably uh, considerably lighter than my Commander is. And, uh, you know, little uh, jabs at the throttle you really noticed um, the acceleration that these machines have. It's quite fun. Oh yeah, you sit a lot higher, eh? We came along this nice brook, and it was lunchtime anyway, so we stopped here. Bruce pulled out his barbecue, and uh, everyone had brought some food with them, like hot dogs and sausages, things like that. Bruce cooked those up, and then uh, while he was doing that, it took a few minutes and threw the drone up just to get an overhead shot uh, of this little area uh, before we got back onto the trail again. Big Ed had to leave a little early. Right after he went back towards our uh, the offload point where the trucks were, we found this uh, this fun little gravel pit. It just seemed to keep going on and on. And uh, of course, a lot of it was low-lying areas and full of water since it had rained a lot recently. Bruce and I were talking on the Bluetooth headsets and uh, we were we had mentioned we hadn't seen Brent driving around in a while and we were wondering where he was and then all of a sudden Bruce said he found him swamped. Oh no, really? When Bruce told me that Brent was swamped, I thought he meant that he just drove too deep in some water someplace and uh, had got himself stuck. I was wrong. Oh.
I drove around the front side of them and used a tow rope to hook onto the front of them to try to pull them out of that mess. It's probably not neutral, is it? No. Okay. You gotta put it in neutral. Okay. He was in there too tight, I couldn't get him out, so uh, I ended up having to rearrange my machine and then Bruce came around the other side and we hooked our winches together and uh, Bruce started pulling me with his winch as I was pulling uh, Bowden out and we ended up getting him out that way. The poor guy was soaked and freezing from being in that cold water and uh, luckily Bruce and um, and Thomas had enough extra clothes between the two of them that he was able to change out into some dry clothes before uh, heading back towards where our vehicles were. Oh, man. Two-man pullout. <laughs>